Shoes are an item of footwear intended to protect and comfort the foot in various activities. Today, we are learning about them. And by learning, I mean I spent 25 hours doing this video and you get to see the final result. Earliest shoes are dated from 40,000 years before Christ. I like to call them sweet potato shoes. After that, 4,000 years before Christ, sandals were discovered. They were made with papyrus leaves by Egyptians or soft leather if we're talking about the Persians. Needles were made out of bamboo or bones, because yes, vegans did exist back then. When our ancestors decided they wanted to be more fashionable, they moved on into moccasins and boots. The oldest pair of boots in northern China belonged to a woman that died about 200,000 years ago. As you can see, you can differentiate American tribes' moccasins by their ornamentation and patterns. So while doing my research, I found this Instagram page. This is basically a shoe museum and they do reels about certain specific pairs of shoes, not just ancient shoes, but also contemporary designers. It's pretty dope, so check it out. Oh, and also for those who are interested, I did found these UGG models that kind of remind me of Mokusen, so I thought it'd be cool to include it in here. A thousand years before Christ, Roman juiced platform sandals made from wood or cork soles. Buskin shoes were also common in Greece and Rome, where they were worn by tragic actors, hunters, and soldiers. If we jump a bit in the timeline, in the 10th century, China had a canon of beauty called Golden Lotus, where people's toes would be bent and even broken to fit special shoes. Next time you're waxing your bikini line, have that in mind. In the year 1200, Mongol used goodle shoes. Throughout the history, wood was also used to make shoes. In 1230 or 1230, I don't know how to say this years, the alternative people in Germany invented clocks. And the Japanese made gettas. In the Gothic period, pool lanes were worn and the tips of these toes could be as long as half a meter. Throughout the years, as you know, shoes' purposes evolved from protection to also status. But that happened before, you probably think, because in ancient Greek, the more laces sandals had and the thinner the sole of them were, the higher rank they were as soldiers. Talking about status, let's not name names here, but there were a few kings who invented different types of shoes because they had deformed feet and they wanted to hide that. A bit further ahead, there were Chopines. In the 16th century, a group of wealthy French women wore high heels for the first time because they wanted to murder their husbands and they needed a hidden weapon for that. The last part is not factual, but I thought it would make the story more interesting. But actually, the first people to wear high heels ever were men. Men's legs in the 19th century were the ideal of beauty, so women wouldn't even show their shoes because their skirts would cover their legs and their feet. In the Baroque period, the shows observed the art by including materials like velvet, satin, and silk, and using ribbons and gemstones. In 1790, English and veterans introduced shoelaces as we know them for the first time. However, this did not become widely popular until the 20th century. During this time period, Chinese women favored Manchu. These shoes required women to walk very carefully and they were an alternative to Western high heels. Only in the beginning of the 19th century did women's and men's shoes start to differentiate a bit more. Moving on, in 1865 rosette shoes appeared, in 1870 there were cowboy boots, and later on the Oxford shoes and the Wellington boots. In the Industrial Revolution, shoes started to be made quicker with sewing machines, and that was the time where left foot shoes and right foot shoes started to be different. Until the World War I, nudity wasn't acceptable, so slippers appeared to be very sexy, made from silk or satin. Also, are you familiar with Tabby's shoes? Tabin's origins actually date back to the 15th century in Japan when the Iceland nation first started to import cotton from China. This enabled the mass production of socks, which were worn with sandals so they were developed with divided toes. These socks ended up growing into divided toes shoes. In the 20th century, pop culture brought new structures, constantly changing trends and colorful models. The Beatles popularized Chelsea shoes, Audrey Hepburn popularized kitten heels, and schoolgirls wore Mary Jane shoes. Converse were born in 1917 and drew the beginning of sport shoes. Isn't it hilarious to think about a world without sneakers? In 1920, the Spectator shoes were invented, and they were most used to attend sport events. Leather soles were then replaced by rubber, skirts length decreased, which brought more elaborated designs for women, and in 1935, boat shoes appeared. During wartime, women were prohibited to buy more than three pairs of leather shoes per year. But the rationing of materials created more originality. In 1953, loafers were in. Look at this pair of men's loafers from the 80s. 
The specific pair was actually worn by Severn Barnet, who was a music executive that represented Elton John. This was actually one of the only periods in history where platforms were trendy not only for women, but also for men. 1955 brought the stiletto heels for the first time. In 1962, flip-flops came to life, and in 1964, we had the Birkenstocks. It was in that decade that chunky heels appeared to create comfort in discos for women. Doc Martens followed, and in 1978, Uggs appeared. In 1982, we had Reeboks, 1985, the Air Jordan 1s for the first time, jellies were very popular, and we can't forget about the vibrant five-finger shoes. In 2002, Crocs were made, and a couple years later was when the sneakers with heels were invented. Nowadays, pretty much everything is considered fashionable and potentially cool, which I think makes dressing up a lot more fun. We've got Mary Jane shoes back, all types of platforms, loafers, old collars, chunky heels, stilettos, combat boots, knee-high boots, chunky sneakers, minimal sneakers, puffy, shiny, literally everything. Nowadays, brands love to make shoes lighter. Sewing has been replaced a lot of times by bonding, and I wouldn't be surprised if the next shoe trend was literally a thick sock. Anyways, I didn't consider myself to be a shoe person until now, but seeing all of these models, I think the switch has turned on. So this was our quick run through shoes history. I hope that if you ever have to participate in a shoe history conversation, you can add some value to it. I am not the best at reminding dates and names, so I hope that mostly what you took out of this video is a storyline and a lot of fun images. If you stayed until the end, please give this video a like, subscribe to my zine, and comment down below what is your all-time favorite pairs of shoes. Mine are currently a pair of black boot converses that I literally wear every time I'm looking at them right now. For all of those who are new to my zine, welcome. This is a digital fashion magazine from people to people. So make sure to follow me on Instagram because I usually ask you guys for suggestions or art that I then include in the videos. Um, and yeah, the my zine playlist with all of the music I use in this video is listed down below. Without further ado, I'll see you next week. Bye.